Hey guys, welcome back to Wixfix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to filter your repeaters using a search input field. In the last repeater filtration video that I made, we used two dropdown inputs. And then mid next month, I'll be releasing a video on how you can combine both the dropdowns and the search box to make a complete filter system. But let's go ahead and get started with today's video. So the first thing we're gonna need, obviously, is a database. So what we're gonna do is come over to add, content manager, and we're gonna add to site. Now you may already have this on your website and you're just wanting to get to the code, but for those of you who do not have this already set up, you can choose to create your own database or you can come down and choose a preset that you might want to use. For this one, let's just do the properties listings one. And this is gonna add a couple dynamic pages to our website. And it's also gonna go ahead and open up the spreadsheet or the database. Now for this video, we're gonna be allowing the search box to search for the title of the property. And for now, we'll also go ahead and do the agent name. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this agent name all the way to the beginning, just like that. So that now we have both of them side by side. So we can easily open this up and we can get the properties that we'll need for these later on. But let's go ahead and start by closing out the database for now. And now we have a working database. But since we added that collection, it created a properties all page, which is basically just a repeater showing all the items in the database. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is go ahead and bring this down just a little bit. I'm gonna go over to input we're gonna get a text input and we're just gonna drag this out to the page, just like that. Next, what I want to do is go ahead and get a button, just like this. And we're also just going to duplicate it, just like that. So for this first button, let's go ahead and say search. For the second button, let's go ahead and say reset. So as soon as they type something in and press search, we're gonna want this reset button to appear. But in this setting, or in this input, let's go into the settings and we're gonna change the placeholder to search by property or agent, just like that. Now, what we want to do is just go ahead and enable dev mode because this video does require a little bit of code, but of course, and as always, I will provide the code for free on my website. So feel free to click the link in the description and copy over the paste to your own website. Now, I do suggest you watch this video because I will be showing you what items you need to change in your code to make sure it actually functions properly on your website. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I want to do before even getting started is I want to rename the elements on the website. So this input one, we're gonna go ahead and call this search input. And you're gonna notice that the first letter of the second word I have capitalized. And this is what's known in the coding world as camel case. For the first word, you want the first letter to be lowercase, and then every first letter of every following word needs to be capitalized. So for example, let's get this search, and we're gonna call this search button with a capital B. And then we're gonna grab this reset button, and we're gonna call it reset button with a capital B, okay? And then what I want to do is just go ahead and place this search button right on top of the reset button. And now we can actually go ahead and start coding this to work, but the first thing we need to do is actually import Wix data. So it's kind of like importing an API that Wix has in the back end. So we're gonna do import Wix data from Wix data. So it's gonna look like that. Now you're gonna notice it is grayed out because we do not have a function that references this API. So if you see this and you're done with the rest of your code, then this is telling you that you're not actually using this API on the page and you can just delete it if you don't plan to actually do anything else with it. But as we start coding the rest of this, you're gonna notice that this will no longer be grayed out in the end. The next thing I want to do is right underneath the API, I actually want to call the reset button and we're just gonna go ahead and hide it because we will not need this on the page when we first open up the page. We only want this reset button visible after the user has actually 
pressed search. So we're just gonna go ahead and just hide that button for now. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and grab this search button right here. We're gonna go down to the event handlers. We're gonna select on click and we're gonna add this event to our page. Now you're gonna notice that it added a little bit of code right over here. And I'm just gonna delete all the comments that were inside of it. But now what we want to do is say, when this search button is clicked, we want something to happen, which for this, we're just gonna say search. And we're gonna add some parentheses, just like that. And you're gonna notice that it is red right here. And that's because we basically just told when the search button is clicked to run a function called search. However, we have not actually set up the function called search. So let's go ahead and do that next. So what we're gonna do is say function search, and then we can go ahead and tell it what to do. But you're gonna notice that the red line under the search has disappeared because now this search function is referencing this search function. However, it's still not gonna do anything because we haven't put anything inside of it yet. Let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing we want to do is say Wix data dot query. And what we're gonna go ahead and do is grab, go back to our content manager, press manage, and you're gonna see our properties right here. We're gonna press this three dots and press edit settings. What we need to get is this collection ID, which is property. So I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it in right between these quotes just like that. And then down below that, we're gonna do dot contains, and we're gonna add some more quotation marks. But for this one, we're gonna go into the actual database. So we're gonna to go to content manager, manage content, and go into the properties. And for this first one, let's go ahead and grab title. So we're gonna click on title, go to properties, and we need this field key right here. And we're gonna go ahead and close out. And then let's go ahead and paste in title right there. And then on the outside of the parentheses, we're gonna do a comma. And we're going to do dollar sign W and we're going to call the search input just like that. And on the outside of the inner parentheses, we're going to do dot value. So basically what that's saying is if when the search button is clicked, it's going to look for the search, the value that the user put inside the input to see if it matches anything in the properties database. If it does, then it will display the content here. But like I said earlier, we don't wanna just search title. We also wanna go ahead and search for the agent name as well. So if we go into the field key for this, we're gonna look up, we're gonna see the field key is agent, lowercase, capital N name, okay? So we're gonna go back and then right underneath this, we're gonna do dot and, and we're going to do Wix data dot query and in this query we need to have this properties again just like that and then we're going to do dot contains we're going to put an agent name comma dollar sign w search input value and I you can see that this is red and this is because I did mess up a little bit what we actually want to do is copy this this little code right here the comma through value and we're gonna paste it right here just like that so basically it needs to be agent name comma then the search input value so then underneath that we're gonna do dot find then underneath that, we're gonna do dot then results equals greater than and then the curly brackets. And we're gonna call the repeater. So we're gonna see dollar sign W and we're gonna say properties repeater dot data equals to results dot items and then underneath this then function right here we're also going to go ahead and make sure that the search button is hidden and 
And then we're also going to go ahead and make sure that the reset button is now showing. And just for safety, we're also going to go ahead and call the reset button. And we're just going to enable it. Perfect. So now we do have the search input and search button working. Now we need to tell the reset button what to do. We're gonna make sure we have the reset button selected. We're gonna go down to the event handlers and we're gonna add an on click event. Similar to what we did with the search button. And what we want to do is we want to call this properties data set. So we're gonna do dollar sign W properties data set and we want to set filter to wix data dot filter and we're just going to leave that empty so basically what that's going to do is it's going to remove any sort of sorting that we applied to it then underneath that what we want to do is grab the search input and we're going to set the value to equal undefined. So basically that is going to remove any text that the user had put into this input field. Underneath that, what we want to do is go ahead and call the search button. And we want to show this. Then we want to make sure it's also enabled. So we're gonna do dollar sign W search button enable and then last but not least we also need to rehide the reset button so we're going to do dollar sign w call the reset button and we're going to press hide just like that and before we actually run a test one thing i do want to mention that i did make a small mistake Instead of and, we're actually gonna go ahead and put or. So now if we go ahead and press preview, we're gonna see that we have an input, a search button with the reset button hidden, and we're gonna see our list of our properties. But let's say we want to actually look for an apartment and not a house. So let's go ahead and type in apartment and press search. The first thing you're gonna notice is that the search button has disappeared and is replaced with the reset button. And we're gonna notice that the properties have filtered so that the only apartment properties are displaying. Now, if I go ahead and press reset, it's gonna automatically bring back all of the properties for our website. And then let's also just check if we can find properties by an agent. So I know one name is Kelly. So if we go ahead and press search again, we're going to see the properties that are for sale by Kelly Parker. But that basically wraps it up for the video today, guys. If you guys did enjoy, please consider giving this video a like and consider subscribing for more Wix content coming out really soon. Thank you all again, and I'll see you all in the next one.